This presentation is on the modified checklist for autism in toddlers that's been revised and also has a follow-up question. So it's abbreviated the MCHAT-RF and is the current recommendations for um, screening for autism spectrum disorder. This tool was first developed in 1999 and has been revised twice. Once uh, revised to um, create more sensitive questions and then um, the follow-up questions added to um, screen out the other developmental issues um, to be more specific for autism spectrum disorder. So the screen, the screen was developed to screen and pick up any child with any autism spectrum disorder, not limited to just pure autism. So it's very good at picking up developmental delays all across the spectrum. It's a screening tool, not a diagnostic tool. So it just indicates that these children need follow up, um, need further workup and evaluation to rule out autism. It can be used by providers and other child care professionals. And the revised form is 20 yes, no parent self-report items that can be scored quickly in less than two minutes. And we do that usually having them fill it out in the waiting room prior to the well child visit. And then depending on how that's scored, it can be followed up with 20 true false follow up questions and a scoring algorithm algorithm to determine the type of delay and the type of follow-up that's needed. And the whole um, scoring manual is posted in your reading assignments for this course. The um, overview of the tool is that it was validated for screening toddlers between the ages of 16 to 30 months of age, and it's not really been thoroughly investigated and validated for um, ages outside this group, although I, I suspect that will change quickly based on the new Bright Futures recommendations that we screen at 9, 18, and 30 months. It can be used very easily at well child checkups and assesses the risk for autism spectrum disorder and with the follow-up also picks up other um, developmental delays. So some additional considerations, it's these, it starts with these 20 parent report items, and the parents complete the questionnaire prior to the appointment. You instruct the parents to answer each item. If the behavior is rare, they should answer it as, as a no. Um, the goal of the tool is to maximize sensitivity, so there is potential for a high rate of false positives, and that's where the follow-up questions come in. Not all children who score at risk for autism will be diagnosed with autism. So you need to reassure your patients about that as well. This is um, just a screenshot of the tool, but it is in the manual that's posted in your reading assignments. So you can take a quicker, a closer look at each individual question. But it starts with these 20 questions that the parent just answers yes or no. Um, if you point to something across the room, does your child look at it? And then it gives the example. If you point at a toy or an animal, does your child look at the toy or animal? And the second question is, have you ever wondered if your child might be deaf? And um, so on. So they just go down and answer um, those 20 questions uh, in the waiting room but prior to the well child visit. Your scoring um, requires that every uh, item be answered, and you um, score by looking at items two through five. A yes is an at risk, and, and it scores one point for each of those answers being yes. And then all other items, no is a risk. So if they answer no to anything except two, five, and 12, that gives them one point for each no. And then you sum the risk scores. So the interpretation is um, low risk, zero to two, medium risk, three to seven, and we follow up by administering the additional 20 
um, true false questions. High risk is eight to 20 and you don't really have to follow up, you just refer. Um, the follow-up questions are scored with an algorithm, and once again, that's in the manual. And here's the scoring template and instructions link, um, but it's also posted in the course. Here's sort of a graphic depiction or a figure that sort of um, points out that scoring again. So if the total is less than three, no follow-up is needed, um, you'll just do the screening again at the next um, well child visit where it's indicated. So remember it was nine months, 18 months, and 30 months. If they have a total score between three and seven, you're gonna do the follow-up and you're going to um, look at a total score of greater than two on the MCHAT follow-up for referral for diagnostic and evaluation and early intervention. Um, a total score of eight or greater is immediate referral regardless of the follow-up. So additional considerations um, are that if a child um, fails the screening, you're going to refer for further evaluation. It's not diagnostic, it's just a screening, but you're going to refer. Any child with developmental delays or concerns um, for other developmental disorders, like those red flags that we've talked about, those kids can be referred as well. And then anybody who has additional concerns, whether it's the primary care provider, um, maybe it's a preschool teacher, or it's the parents, if there's any concern, go ahead and refer. Early intervention has a long waiting period. These evaluations have long waiting periods. And so it's better to err on the side of referring um, than to wait. And then continued analysis and revision of the tool is ongoing, and that's why we have this revised form of the tool. It's also available in several different languages. Here's a screening and referral algorithm that sort of combines multiple steps and is helpful um, along with some a link to the guidelines for this first signs.org. Um, but you're going to do your general observation and your developmental milestones and observe the child um, during the visit, see how they behave, interact, communicate. Then you're going to develop the screening. And if the screening results show the need for referral, you're going to go ahead and go to step three, which is refer to early intervention and to any specialist for further evaluation. Um, also want to make sure that we're doing lead screening if there's any um, pica present, and the lead screening um, is a routine part of the, the um, Bright Futures visit at the 12 month visit anyway, but um, you also follow up with formal audiology screening and autism screening um, and then for a formal diagnostic evaluation. So this just puts all the pieces together for you. Here are some additional references for um, developmental screening and specifically autism screening. And again, remember that you should be doing some type of developmental screening now, according to Bright Futures, at the 9, 18, and 30-month well-child visits. Have fun seeing toddlers. <laughs>